Hi, my name is Joe Clark. I'm a principal architect at Rolta Advisix. And today we're gonna to be talking about when you would run containers on bare metal versus inside of a virtual machine. And first I wanna start by sort of explaining some of those differences between the two. If we look at what you might you know, traditionally know as today, inside of a virtual machine, you've got an operating system, absolutely, that's running. And then you also have you know, your libraries inside of every single virtual machine that you have. And if we look at what gets layered on top of that, you end up installing those applications in different app groups. So this is app one right there, that might be one app group. And if this is app two, you might install that one on a different virtual machine. And then if this was app three over here, you might install this one in a different virtual machine. And that's kind of the architecture that's well known, sort of well understood. And this is just looking, you know, even if it's not in a virtual machine, this is kind of that similar architecture. Even if these were physical hosts, you would have an operating system, your libraries, and then your application running on top of that. So if we look at how that operates inside of a container, it's actually a little bit different. We've got our operating system in our kernel at the bottom. And that is actually shared with our bins and libraries that are unique for each application. So we'll have three of them here, just like this. Bins and libs, there we go. And then we've actually got our applications all running inside of the same host. So our app one, our app two, and our app three will all be sitting right here on the same host, sharing this kernel space that we've got set up right there. Now, what we end up seeing as a part of this solution is that we've got sort of virtual machine architecture here where these are split out and, and standardized upon and then sort of everything kind of thrown in together here. Now, if, when we come to the question of in virtual machines or bare metal, uh, the question sort of comes about of, okay, well, when would you do that? How would you do that? In the case of virtual machines, obviously the layer that we drop below that right here is a hypervisor and each of these virtual machines might be running you know, independently of each other. And then under, underneath that, we've got storage. We've also got network. Now, say we want to run container hosts running some form of Linux operating system here on bare metal. What do we have to do right below this? Right below this, we need some sort of persistent storage and some kind of network configuration. So when we're looking at these architectures, it really brings a couple different things to bear. You know, why, why would you do one or the other? And I would actually start the question by backing up and saying most cloud providers are actually adhering to this model. Most cloud providers run their container virtual machines on a hypervisor. And for a couple different reasons, as we'll go through here. Um, for you as an enterprise customer, there's just a couple reasons here that we would do this for sure. And the first is that it's just simply easier to start. If you needed to actually get started with Kubernetes and your first job was to install Linux server on bare metal, configure the storage, configure networking, make, su make sure that that is resilient, that's going to be really hard to start. If you can piggyback the work that you've already done inside of virtualization and leverage that for your container architecture, it's going to be a heck of a lot easier to get rolling. From a complexity standpoint, <clears throat> and management standpoint. It's going to be a heck of a lot easier for ongoing management of these for you to be able to manage the virtual machines that are actually running the container workloads inside of them. Um, I also kind of wanted to share an Advisex principle that we actually have as well where with container architecture a lot of times if there's actually a fault in the container host itself We've got a principle where we might not actually ever want that container host to come back online again. And the principle that we sort of call that here is STONIF, which stands for if you have a cluster of these nodes it's, and one of those nodes goes down, it's shoot the other node in the head. Basically saying, I don't ever want to see that node again. I want it to disappear. With a virtualization backing the container architecture, you can actually just sort of fire those VMs out and destroy them and never hear from them again. That way they're they are provisioned fresh in a known good state. You think of that whole, you know, um, reinstalling something to make it work well. We really want that immutable infrastructure for developers so that every single time they go to deploy, it is consistent and the same. 
And really the last thing that we look at is this allows us to go with package solutions such as VMware PKS that provide us with lifecycle management solutions for not only our container worker nodes, which are sort of highlighted here, but our orchestration components and our management components that will help us in the deployment and ongoing management of the solution. So again, I'm Joe Clark, and this is a quick look at why you would run containers either in bare metal or in a virtual machine. Thanks for watching.